Hi everyone, I'm Julie Gee, the naturalist at Burr Oak State Park. Today I'm here to talk to you about reptiles. Reptiles are fascinating animals that deserve our appreciation and respect. I'm going to start with a little quiz. So get ready to think about what your answers might be to a few questions that I have for you. Here's the first question. Do reptiles have feathers, scales, or hair? What do you think? What makes a reptile unique? Feathers, hair, or scales? The answer is scales. Reptiles are very unique because of the scales that they have on their body. I'm going to show you some examples of that in just a little bit. The next question on the quiz, are reptiles cold-blooded or warm-blooded? Think about that for just a second, cold-blooded or warm-blooded, and the answer is they are cold-blooded animals. That means that they have to get their energy from some source outside of their body. Usually that means the sun. That's why you will see reptiles basking in the sunlight. The sun helps warm up their body, which then helps them give the energy that they need. The next question for you is to think about the different groups and kinds of reptiles that we have on the earth. All of these animals in the list are reptiles except one of them. Let me read the list to you and you can decide which of these animal groups are not reptiles. Snakes, lizards, turtles, toads, alligators, or crocodiles. Which one of those do you think is not a reptile? Take a minute and think about it. And the answer is toads. Do you know what group of animals toads belong to? They are amphibians. Amphibians are animals that lead a double life. They live part of their life on the land and part of their life in water. So toads lay their eggs in water, the eggs hatch in the water and develop into tadpoles. Then those tadpoles eventually grow legs to leave the water and live the rest of their life on land. One other animal that I wanna to talk to is the box turtle, which is a very fascinating, interesting reptile that we have here at Burr Oak State Park and in Southeast Ohio. How long do you think box turtles can live? 20 years, 50, 80 years, 100, or 200 years? Box turtles, I bet a lot of you have seen box turtles before. Box turtles can live up to 100 years. Isn't that amazing? Let me show you a couple of box turtle shells so that you know exactly what turtle I'm talking about. These are both box turtle shells. This one is missing the bottom of its shell, but this one has half of the bottom part of its shell. Box turtles are called box turtles because they can pull their head inside their shell, their legs and their tail, then close up that shell so that they're completely protected inside of that box. And if you see a box turtle crossing the road, if it's safe to do so, you can stop, get out of your car, again, look for other cars coming, be sure it's safe, but then go help that box turtle across the road. You want to help it across in the same direction that it was traveling in. Now I'm going to share with you two reptiles that live here at the Burr Oak State Park Nature Center. This is a black rat snake or eastern rat snake that lives at the Burr Oak State Park Nature Center. In order to have an animal 
from the wild in captivity at my nature center, I have to have a wildlife permit from the Ohio Division of Wildlife. I want you to know that because you can't just go outside and pick up a snake or any other, a turtle, any other wild animal and decide to keep it at home. First of all, it's not good for the animal and you need to have a permit in order to do that. Back to the black rat snake though. This is one of Ohio's largest snakes. It can grow up to six feet long and black rat snakes are excellent climbers. They love to climb trees. I have actually seen black rat snakes resting in the sunshine and just taking it easy up in a tree while I've hiked below that tree along a trail here at Burr Oak State Park. Let's talk about some of the really cool adaptations that snakes have. All snakes have a tongue that they use to sense the world around them. You can see this black rat snake is sticking its tongue out. It's basically smelling the air to decide, where am I? Is there anything I should be worried about? Anything dangerous? Is there something nearby that I can smell that's food for me to eat? So don't be worried when you see a tongue flicking it, see a snake flicking its tongue in and out. It's harmless. It can't hurt you with its tongue. It's just simply smelling the air around it. Snakes don't have a good hearing and so they're really dependent on this tongue. Their eyesight is also not the best. They see movement, they see shapes, light and dark, but they don't see detail. So back to that tongue, it's so important for snakes to have that tongue to sense the world around them. When I talked about the snake using its tongue to maybe find out what there is to eat, what do you think this black rat snake might eat? If you guessed mice and chipmunks and rodents, you're right. Also, because they're such good climbers, they can go find bird nests that might have eggs or baby birds in it to eat. So they will eat just about anything that they can find that's um, a living thing, like a mammal or a bird, that is small enough for them to fit into their mouth. Snakes can open up their mouth very wide and fit something into that mouth that looks bigger than what they might be able to swallow. But they have a lot of muscles in their body. Their jaw and their mouth and throat are very elastic. So they can fit something very large into their mouth and down into their body to digest. Snakes, of course, have scales. And you can look kind of close up here at this black rat snake and it's the scales that it has. These are all scales, so they have thousands of scales on their body. The scales on the top are a little bit different from the scales on the bottom of the snake. I'm trying to get this snake, let me show you. The scales on the bottom are long and narrow, sort of wide, narrow scales. Why do you think their scales are different on the bottom than on the top? The reason is that remember I told you what good climbers the black rat snakes are? These scales help the snake climb. And for snakes that don't climb trees or climb other things, those scales help the snake move along the ground and get a grip on a surface to be able to move. All snakes shed their skins throughout their lifetime. This is the snake skin from my black rat snake. It shed this skin a couple of weeks ago. So as snakes grow, as they get bigger and bigger, they keep on shedding their skins. As you can imagine, they shed their skin more often when they're young and they don't shed as often when they get older. But they shed their skin. That doesn't mean that they're ever without a skin. When they shed this skin underneath, 
there's brand new scales, all bright and colorful. As a matter of fact, right after snakes shed their skin, that's when they're the most colorful. One fascinating thing about snakes when they shed is that they shed their eye lens too. So I wanna show you in this snake skin, the eye lens that shed when this snake shed. Now I'm going to show you another reptile that lives at the Burr Oak State Park Nature Center. We're back in the Nature Center here at Burr Oak to highlight the second reptile that lives here in the Nature Center. And remember, you have to have a wildlife permit to keep these animals. We're going to talk about a snapping turtle. Snapping turtles are fascinating creatures and you're going to see the snapping turtle here in this nice big tank we have for it at Burr Oak. Snapping turtles have to snap for protection because the bottom of their body has a very small portion covered with shell. The rest of it is soft tissue that a predator could easily get to and hurt the snapping turtle. So that's why snapping turtles have to snap for protection. And you might get to see that as it's moving around here in our tank inside the nature center. How long do you think a snapping turtle can hold its breath? Snapping turtles can hold their breath for 20 to 30 minutes. That's pretty amazing. So 30 minutes might go by before this snapping turtle comes up to take a breath of air. Snapping turtles eat a variety of foods. They're going to eat fish, frogs, even vegetation. Um, kind of they, they would be considered omnivores. They eat a variety of different types of foods. Here at the Nature Center, I feed the snapping turtle fish because you may have seen some fish swimming around in the tank with it. And I feed it some pellets that are basically turtle food that have good vitamins and minerals in them. And I feed it earthworms. I'm going to show you now the snapping turtle eating an earthworm. Actually, I'll feed it two earthworms for you. So let me get, you can see he's ready. He usually gets excited when it's feeding time. I'm going to get an earthworm. I use tongs because I certainly wouldn't put my fingers into the tank with the turtle. And you're gonna see him come up and get this, the worm. Snapping turtles have to eat in the water. That is the only way they can swallow their food. So a snapping turtle cannot eat while it's on land. The water actually helps push the food down the throat of the snapping turtle. You can see he's very happy to eat these earthworms. Thanks for joining me today. I had a really fun time talking about reptiles and showing you the black rat snake and the snapping turtle. One thing that I want to leave you with is that we want to respect all reptiles and all life on earth. If you see a snake or you see a snapping turtle, please just leave it alone. Understand that it's more afraid of you than you are of it and let it go on its way living its life. Thanks again, and I hope to see you here at Burr Oak State Park where you can come visit the black rat snake and the snapping turtle.